Starting off with the LA Angels, I have Nolan Shonwell. After getting drafted this past season, Shonwell only ended up playing 22 games in the minors before getting the call to the bigs. Because of his advanced approach at the plate, the Angels felt there was no need for him to stay in the minors considering he put up a 505 on base with a 365 batting average. Projected a bat second for the Angels this year, he should be an intriguing bat to watch. For the Houston Astros, I have Jose Abreu. After a successful nine years with the White Sox, he signed a three-year, $58.5 million deal with the Astros last offseason. Well, let's just say that hasn't gone well so far, as he posted a negative 0.6 fan graph war last season. However, he was battling some back issues, and he did look better in the final month of the season. One thing that should also help him is some better plate discipline, as he had a 36% chase rate, his highest since 2016. Let's see if year two goes a little bit better for him. For the Oakland A's, I have Zach Geloff. The A's don't have much going for them as of right now, but they do have a promising young player in Zach Geloff. Last season, he posted an 841 OPS over 300 plate appearances, along with 14 homers and 14 stolen bases. His average exit velocity was a tick under 90 miles per hour last season, and his chase rate clocked in at 29%. So with some improvements there, we could see even better numbers from Geloff in 2024. Okay, so we're back here at the Bet US house, and to help me with the Blue Jays, I have Jim of Ball Cap Sports. Jim, who is one hitter for the Blue Jays this year that you're paying attention to? I really am excited at the possibilities of Aurelvis Martinez. A ton of power. IKF cannot block Martinez. He has to get his shot this year, and he's the kind of guy who could really uh, make an impact, have an immediate jolt of energy and life to that lineup uh, once he's called up and he starts getting some regular playing time. Yeah, I like that a lot, especially with the departure of Matt Chapman. Aravis Martinez had quite a few bombs last year in the minor leagues. I think that would be a a, a nice, natural replacement for Matt Chapman moving forward. So let's see if he can take that step. For the Atlanta Braves, I have Jared Kalnick. The number four prospect from 2021 hasn't fully found a way to get it going in the bigs yet, but let's see if he finds some luck with his third organization, the Atlanta Braves. After a hot start last season in which he hit 308 with a 982 OPS in the first month, he cooled off and then eventually fractured his foot after he kicked a water cooler. After missing all of August, he came back in September and did finish strong, hitting 261 with a 373 on base. With a strong batted ball metrics and a good walk percentage, Kelnick could be close, but he'll need to cut down his chase rate and stay more consistent overall. For the Milwaukee Brewers, I have Jackson Churio. Without even playing one game at the major league level, the number two prospect in baseball was awarded an eight-year, $82 million deal. This shows how much faith the Brewers have in the 19-year-old, and for good reason. The upside is through the roof, as he's strong in all aspects of the game. In 122 games at AA last season, he hit 280 with a 336 on base and a 467 slugging with 22 homers and 43 stolen bases. While he does need to reduce the chase rate, scouts expect this to improve over time. Churio has a chance to be an exciting rookie in 2024. For the St. Louis Cardinals, I have Jordan Walker. Speaking of rookies, Jordan Walker is coming off his rookie season. While he did have his ups and downs, there's a lot of promise still with Walker. Over 465 plate appearances, he hit 276 with a 787 OPS. While most of his batted ball metrics and plate discipline were on the lower side last season, Walker is expected to improve, and I think he's going to have himself a good year in year two. For the Chicago Cubs, I have Christopher Morales. Last season, we saw Morrell really emerge as an exciting player for the Cubs as he hit 26 home runs with a 508 slugging thanks to a solid batted ball profile. This led to him being involved in trade rumors this offseason, but in the end, he remains a Cub heading into 2024. However, if Morrell wants to take another step forward, he'll have to improve his plate discipline as he had a chase rate of about 29% and a middle-of-the-road walk rate. If he can improve on these things, he could be even more exciting this coming season. For the Arizona Diamond backs, I have Corbin Carroll. After an amazing first season with Arizona, people are excited to see what Carroll has in store for year two. It'll be tough to beat year one, though, as he put up a fantastic slash line of 285, 362, and 506 with 25 home runs and a silly 54 stolen bases. However, even with his amazing season, he could still improve in some areas. This includes his 28% chase rate, which was middle of the road, and he could try to draw more walks as he only posted an 8 
8.8% last year. His batted ball data could improve as well as his hard hit percentage was middle of the road in the 51st percentile. In the end, these are nitpicks and it should be fun to watch Carroll cause havoc yet again this upcoming season. For the LA Dodgers, I have Gavin Lux. I can see a lot of people going with Otani here, but nah, that's boring. I'm going to go with former top prospect Gavin Lux, who missed all of last season due to a knee injury, and he's already having issues defensively at shortstop, prompting Dave Roberts to name Mookie Betts the shortstop indefinitely. Even prior to both of these aspects, he hasn't fully gotten it going at the major league level. While he did hit an okay 276 with a 346 on base in 2022, he hit better against righties than he did lefties. Overall, though, there's still a lot of promise with his bat, but time is running out, and 2024 will be a big year for him. For the San Francisco Giants, I have Jung-Hoo Lee. We've all seen how good former KBO great ha Sung Kim has become in the major leagues. Now it's time to see what former KBO MVP Jung-Hoo Lee can do after he signed with the Giants this past offseason. Possessing fantastic bat-to-ball skills, plenty of speed, and defensive abilities, Lee was fantastic in the KBO, hitting 340 with a 407 on base and a 490 slugging over seven seasons there. While the Major League game should be tougher, as well as coming off an ankle injury last season, Lee's game should translate well to the Major Leagues, and he should be a fun player to watch. For the Cleveland Guardians, I have Kyle Manzardo. As one of the top prospects in the Rays system the last couple of years, Manzardo showed he was a bat on the rise. After a slow start to 2023 in the minors, though, he ended up being traded straight up for starting pitcher Aaron Savali. After moving over to the Guardian system, he got back on track over his final 21 games, posting a 938 OPS with six home runs. He's projected to be the first baseman for the Guardians this season, and I think he could be a sneaky Rookie of the Year candidate. Hey, doing everyone? We're back here at the Bet US house, and I have a very special guest here to help me with the Marlins, a Florida native, actually, Mike of Stark Raving Sports. Mike, who are you paying attention to offensively with the Marlins this year? I mean, it's anybody other than Jazz Chisholm. We've been waiting to see what he does for a full 162. His last 162 games have been really good. The problem is they're all not in the same season. He's had injury bugs. They moved him to center field, which looked like a disaster at first, but he ended up being a pretty good defensive center fielder. The tools are all there. Baseball wants to see him be really good. Maybe this is the time we finally get it. Yeah, Jazz Chisholm, he's got that power. He's got that speed, and he's just a fun player overall. Looking forward to see what he does this coming season. For the Seattle Mariners, I have Ty France. I thought about going with Julio Rodriguez here because he had a slow first half last season, and well, he is Julio Rodriguez, but instead, I'll go with Ty France, who's coming off a down season. After a couple of solid seasons, he struggled last year and is looking to bounce back in 2024. Over 158 games, he only hit 250 with an OPS of 703 and saw his home runs dip from 20 in 2022 to 12 last season. While he did better against off-speed pitches, his numbers dipped against fastballs and curveballs, and he saw his whiff percentage go up overall. This past offseason, though, he went to driveline to clean up his mechanics and gain some confidence, so he's looking for that to carry over into this upcoming season. For the Washington Nationals, I have Kyber Ruiz. While his defense was concerning last year, Ruiz did make strides to the plate. He showed an improved offensive game with a 260 batting average, 308 on base, and a 409 slugging, along with 18 home runs, and only struck out 10% of the time, the third lowest in the major leagues. However, he had a high chase rate of 36%, only walked 12% of the time, and his batted ball metrics were pretty low. At only 25 years old, though, there should be room for improvement heading into 2024. We're back here at the BetUS house, and I have a very special guest to help me out with the Mets segment today, and that is Giraffe Nick Mark. So Mark, which hitter do you think people need to watch on the Mets this year? So there's one answer, and it's Francisco Alvarez. Uh, he just has the ability to become not only one of the best catchers in baseball, but I genuinely think maybe one of the best power hitters in the game. Uh, the exit velos are absolutely insane from the 22-year-old catcher. The pitchers love throwing to him. There's been so much growth. He wants to get better. And what he did last year maybe doesn't look great at the end of the season because he did get ice cold, but that's almost even more of a reason why to believe in him. Like he, It took him having a bad two months at the end of the year to finish with a, like, 
average OPS for a 21-year-old catcher who hit 25 home runs last year. So power potential is crazy for him, and I'm excited to see what his growth could look like. Yeah, he absolutely matched last year and very good defensively behind the yeah. plate, too. Very excited to see what Alvarez can do in 2024. For the Baltimore Orioles, I have Jackson Holiday. I think it's impossible not to put the number one prospect in baseball here, especially since he's projected to end up being with the Orioles on opening day, and for good reason. Jackson Holiday simply checks off all the boxes, hitting for average, shows great discipline, is projected for more power as he grows into his body, plays an excellent shortstop, and has great wheels. Last year in the minor leagues, he was sensational, hitting 323 with a 442 on base, a 490 slugging, 12 homers, and 24 stolen bases. He also walked 101 times over 581 plate appearances, which comes out to an excellent 17%. It's a safe bet he'll be a Rookie of the Year candidate in 2024 and a sensational player moving forward. For the San Diego Padres, I have Fernando Tatis Jr. While he's missed some time due to a PED suspension and a wrist surgery, he came back last year and had mixed results. Pretty much all of his numbers went down, minus the stolen on bases, but there's still a lot to be hopeful for in the future. His expected numbers and batted ball profile still look pretty strong, which is a good sign coming off missing an entire season. However, he will need to clean up the approach at the plate as his chase rate was a bit high last season. He was also learning a new position in right field, which probably didn't help him much at the plate, but he excelled in his new position in right field. I compare 2023 Tatis Jr. to 2022 Ronald Acuna Jr., and we all know what happened the year after that. For the Philadelphia Phillies, I have Bryce Harper. After fully transitioning to a new position at first base in 2023, I'm expecting a big year out of Harper in 24. Despite missing time last season after getting elbow surgery, he came back with no issues at all, shown by fantastic advanced metrics and batted ball data. Overall, he hit 293 with a 900 OPS and 21 home runs, over 546 plate appearances. Now that he's passed his injury and playing a less demanding position at first base, I think Harper is due for a big year. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, I have O'Neill Cruz. It seems the baseball world has forgotten about O'Neill Cruz after he missed pretty much all of last season due to a fractured ankle. However, after a normal offseason and spring training, I think it's time to get ready for Cruz to come back into our lives, which could be exciting. The big thing for Cruz is his batted ball profile as he ranked in the top 10% in both average exit velocity and barrel percentage last year. With Cruz though, along with coming back from injury, he'll still need to work on cleaning up his plate discipline, but he showed some signs of that in a small sample size last season, walking 17% of the time in 40 plate appearances. For the Texas Rangers, I have Wyatt Langford. After wrecking havoc at the University of Florida where he hit a career 363 and posted a career 1.217 OPS, he was drafted fourth overall by the Rangers and proceeded to do just as much damage in the minor leagues last season. Over 44 games between rookie ball and AAA, he hit 360 with a 480 on base and a 677 slugging. Sure, 44 games is a small sample size, but my goodness, those are amazing numbers. He's still going in spring training as well, hitting 300 with an OPS over 1,100 through 26 plate appearances so far. As of right now, Langford is projected to be with the Rangers on opening day, and at this point, I don't see why not. Before I get into the rest of the video, I just wanted to shout out today's sponsor, BetUS, who sent myself, Ballcap Sports, and Wardy NYM to the BetUS house. As of right now, Wyatt Langford is at plus 400 to win the Rookie of the Year in the American League. So if I bet 50 bucks and it comes true, that would win me $200. BetUS has an awesome deal going on right now where if you use the code JOIN125, you get a 125% bonus on your first three deposits with a minimum $100 deposit. Go check it out, but as always, please play responsibly. Now, let's get back to the video. For the Tampa Bay Rays, I have Junior Caminero. The number four prospect in baseball has been lighting it up in the minor leagues, and Rays fans should be excited. Last year, over 81 games at AA, he hit 309 with a 373 on base, a 548 slugging, and 20 home runs. All in all, he's a special bat with his power graded at an 80 by Baseball America to go with a 55 hit tool. His explosive bat is a bit ahead of his bat-to-ball skills, plate discipline, and pitch recognition at the moment.
moment, but they're still good and improving. For the Boston Red Sox, I have Tyler O'Neill. After a couple of injury-riddled seasons in St. Louis, Tyler O'Neill is looking to get back to his 2021 numbers, where he hit 34 home runs with a 912 OPS. While he had only 266 plate appearances last season, he did show progress, getting a good amount of barrels, not chasing too much, and drawing a good amount of walks. If healthy, I think we could see a good year from O'Neal in 2024. For the Cincinnati Reds, I have Christian Encarnacion Strand. If you like dudes that can just mash, Christian Encarnacion Strand is your guy. After hitting 20 homers over 67 games at AAA last season, the Reds called him up and he proceeded to hit another 13 home runs over 63 games. He's got an explosive bat that recorded some very good batted ball metrics, but he will have to work on the plate discipline at the major league level as he had a high chase rate rate and low walk rate. For the Colorado Rockies, I have Brendan Rogers. Rogers was a higher prospect not too long ago, but didn't play much last season because of a shoulder injury. However, in 2022, over 137 games, he posted some good advanced metrics, including a solid expected batting average, hard hit percentage, chase rate, and strikeout percentage. If the injuries are in the past, I expect Rogers to be productive for the Rockies in 24. For the Kansas City Royals, I have Vinny Pasquantino. Speaking of guys getting hurt, Pasquantino also didn't play much last season due to a torn labrum in his shoulder. However, after recovery and a normal offseason, Pasquantino is looking to get back to the numbers he was putting up prior. In 2022, his advanced metrics were solid across the board while hitting 295 with a 383 on base and a 450 slugging. With things back to normal, I think Pasquantino will be a productive player yet again on an improved Royals team. For the Detroit Tigers, I have Spencer Torkelson. I almost went with Colt Keith here, who just signed an extension with the Tigers after a successful minor league career and not playing one major league game. However, I'm going to go with Torkelson. Last year, we finally saw the number one pick from the 2020 draft get it going after a down 2022 as he hit 31 home runs with a 759 OPS. He made a lot of improvements, including chasing the ball less and walking more, while also improving his barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, and average exit velocity. Heading into year Year three, I think we could see Torkelson put together his best season yet. For the Minnesota Twins, I have Royce Lewis. Lewis has had it tough so far in his pro career after getting drafted first overall in 2017. After a tough start in the minor leagues and a couple ACL tears, he came back just fine though and put up some solid numbers last season. Overall, he hit 309 with a 372 on base and a 548 slugging with 15 home runs. He also came up big in the postseason, hitting four homers and slugging 770. Three. Hopefully, he's completely past his knee issues and we see a fully healthy season from Lewis in 24. For the Chicago White Sox, I have Andrew Vaughn. Drafted third overall in 2019, Vaughn is still trying to reach his ceiling. While he did set a career high in plate appearances and home runs last season, there's still work to be done. His expected numbers weren't great last season and his plate discipline lacked. However, his hard hit and barrel percentage continue to look good. He switched up his offseason routine though, focusing on agility, strength, and a better nutrition plan. Let's see if that can help him finally take that next step forward to being one of the better bats in the game. And last but not least, for the New York Yankees, I have Juan Soto. How could you not go Juan Soto here? We all know what Soto can do. He's one of the best hitters in the game, ranking fifth in Fangraph War since 2019, and he's got one of the best eyes we've seen in quite some time, posting over a 400 on base each year of his career so far. What makes this year exciting for him, though, is because, one, he's a Yankee. Well, that's not too exciting for me as a Red Sox fan. And two, he's in a walk year. Juan Soto has been so good for so long, but we haven't seen what he can do with free agency right around the corner. So that's my list. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. If you can on the way out, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll talk to you next time.